Welcome to Aquanoob. Today we are having trouble. A few days ago I had to unfortunately put down one of my sterby quarries. It was in pretty bad shape. Um, it couldn't swim and uh, it couldn't stay still either. So it was wobbling from side to side. Now hopefully, or hopefully it was nothing contagious, at least at the moment. It looks like that the other fishes are are fine and I hope that it's nothing in the water but we're going to test the water in a moment and then make a water, water change too uh, but hopefully it was something uh, else something that fish had gotten uh, earlier or some sort of other injury that it might have gotten either in this aquarium Hope that it's not something that's repeating itself or an injury that it has gotten earlier when it has been transported to Finland or, or anything like that. Um, now of course it's unfortunate and uh, hopefully uh, I can prevent these kind of losses in the future. That's of course probably impossible but you have to do your best now don't you? So I've also had a bit of a trouble with my water lately. Uh, the pH that we get here in, in Helsinki area from the tap is relatively good. It's quite soft. Uh, the pH is uh, somewhere a bit above, above 7. Um, and it's been that in my aquarium too. These fishes might want to have a little bit under 7 pH but um, I haven't gotten it that low quite yet but it's not a lot above 7 it has been like 7.2 7.5 at the most so I'm not super worried about that either now the KH uh, is quite low in the sap it's been like around one and a half two uh, and in this aquarium I've actually had some problems with that. It's been crashing uh, down to almost zero. Uh, and because of this, I'll do a little check if there's too much, uh, some rotting stuff, for, on, for example, on one of the um, Mopane woods or, or spider woods or whatever those are. Uh, I'll be brushing it today clean and, and then we'll see if it helps any. Um, a few days ago the KH was around 1, so not too bad, but it could be a bit higher. Uh, GH is under 3. Mm, I don't know, there's not much of a need to do much about that, I guess, at the moment. And then we have the, the nitrates, nitrites. Uh, the nitrites, uh, NO2, uh, has been around zero, which is, of course, good. Uh, it seems that my aquarium has a good, good bacterial flora in it, taking care of, of the nitrite. But the nitrates, NO3, they have gone up uh, and actually quite fast. So within a few days, they've gone up. Uh, up to 20 to 30 uh, milligrams per liter. Uh, that's not, not very good. Now I'm not quite sure why that is. It might be that, the, that the, if, if there is rotting wood, then uh, that might do, do something something for the, to the nitrites and cause them to to get up. Um, I guess my plants, they aren't quite up to the snuff, so to speak. It might be that they would need some more um, carbon dioxide, CO2, or something uh, in order to be more efficient in the uptake. Um, my bacterial flora that takes care of nitrites, uh, nitrates, sorry, that might not be quite quite good 
or anything else. Uh, I've been trying to keep the fish a bit on the lower uh, lower food levels. I've given have a, I've put them on a, on a diet, and hopefully they that has helped. Uh, although I suspect that I might still be giving a bit too much, uh, especially since I also have now some renal recurrence, um, which might, or I've been giving them some some cucumber and and zucchini, which might have fouled the water. But we're going to do some water tests now. I'll say a few things about the water tests that I have at the moment. Uh, and then we'll do a water change. I have a video that I ma already made about the, about the water changes, uh, but I'll have a few things that I'll add to it in this one. In the longer run, I'll be doing some videos also about how I put this aquarium together. Uh, there might be something interesting there. There might not be. Uh, but the next video after this one should be a video on the background that I have done by myself. But yeah, let's go over to the uh, water tests. So here are the water tests that I'm at the moment using. Uh, the main one that I use Perhaps not anymore, daily, but at least in the, in the beginning, uh, is this one, uh, Sarah's strips. So you get a strip with with uh, several different tests, um, and it's pretty handy since you just dip it in and read it after about one minute. Uh, and there's pH. KH, GH, and nitrites and nitrates on it. Um, it's it's okay, I would say, uh, but you have to know the limitations of it. Um, so the pH is it's showing a bit this and a bit that sometimes. At least I have that feeling it's showing in the right direction so since the water is around seven it's been showing like around seven but I have the feeling that it's showing way too or it's definitely showing way too low values uh, but then again pH is perhaps something that you just want to keep on on a set level and and not move from there so just in case the pH starts to jump into totally weird weird places then you then you have to think about what's going on but if it stays the same color all the time then I would guess it's it's good for that uh, the KH is actually showing whatever uh, at least in my case I really don't I really can't say if it's like zero or three and at least here that's quite a way big big difference the GH I don't have much to say say about that one actually I don't know it's usually just showing the under three and that's what we have here so uh, I don't know uh, then I have the nitrites which has been showing zero uh, and that's what it's also showing in in other tests I of course take my water to to my uh, local uh, fish store and have it tested there uh, just in case. The nitrites are somewhat useful actually. Uh, it's sh showing roughly uh, from 0 to 10 and 10 to 25 and 25 and more and usually you know that if it's over 25 then perhaps it's a time for a water change. So, know the limitations. Then we have two tests by JBL. Uh, the KH I got pretty early on, um, or 
at the point when I realized that that the uh, KH value that I got from the the local fish store showed almost zero when the strip test was showing whatever uh, and then I needed to start to monitor the KH more more precisely uh, this is an easy one just put some water in here and then you drop drop there drops until it changes color from from uh, blue to yellowish uh, and then the newest one that I got is the nitrates uh, yeah, nitrates. Uh, it's a bit more work to do. It takes about 15 minutes to do this test. So I guess I won't be using it quite daily, but I guess once a week, once two weeks or something like that is, is good if I otherwise don't have time. So yeah, let's take a look at what we can get from these these tests results are interesting let me check so the pH uh, with the uh, test strip was 6.8 kh with the same strip 0 0 to 3 gh under 3 uh, nitrites NO2 0 uh, and nitrates NO3 10 to 25 now the other two tests uh, for KH it showed 1.5 and for the nitrates from roll 5 to 10 milligrams per liter and this gets me a bit uh, confounded or confused sorry a few days ago it was 20 to 25 I have not done any water changes either I'm not doing the test correctly or then the plants have kicked in and have been eating the nitrates as crazy. Now I hope it's the last one and not the first one. I actually did the test 
three times just to be sure because I wasn't quite sure that I had gotten it totally right and as, our, as far as I could see the third time was as close as I could get to the exact milliliters and and milligrams of of the different powders and and droplets and waters that you had to put in that that test so yeah i think i will now do the scrubbing of that wood uh, in any case uh, just to check what its situation is is and that perhaps gives me a bit um, opportunity to check the other one too and then I'll do a small water change because I suspect the uh, there will be some stuff going to be floating around and, and I'll make a little water change just in case so let's start with the wood now I have of course a few things here to help me brush it and uh, yeah let's get it out from the aquarium shall we yes all right let's see what everything we get with it quite a lot quite a lot Alrighty. then we have to do like let check There aren't any plecos. Okay. So yeah, I'll take it to the bath bathroom and uh, unfortunately you can't follow me there. It's just, you know, I don't feel comfortable. So about that water change, um, as I said, there's a video of it where I'm doing it so I'm not going to go that much deeper in it. Uh, you'll see a sped up version of it. Uh, but there, then in that video I said that there's two things that are missing. Here's the first thing. Uh, a filter to block fishes from getting sucked, sucked into the hose. And secondly, uh, I have this. And this is to clamp the hose into the aquarium so that I don't need to have this helping hand. Uh, so this is a basic wrench. Uh, this has a, some special name, crocodile wrench, we call it at least here. Um, and then I have some rubber and then I have the uh, this is a filter material from from the uh, aquarium's original uh, filter that I haven't used and uh, yeah, this is working quite well, actually. So yeah, let's get going. Well, I'm finally done. Unfortunately, the memory card of the camera uh, was full, but I can assure you that you missed nothing of importance. Um, merely a tediously long emptying of the aquarium and then the refilling of it. So that's it. Um, I washed washed the uh, one of the woods. I've checked my water parameters. Everything seems to be fine, at least on that front. Um, I took the opportunity to actually get rid of some of this this plant um, and at the same time I kind of uh, rescaped the wood in a new a better position 
so that it's a bit more open back there. But yeah, at this point, I I have to say goodbye and good night, and hopefully I see you the next time. Thanks.